I mean, it's that iterative work. And I brought one of our engineers uh, uh, is here with me. Uh, so hopefully we're going to utilize that feature here too. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm very happy with the modeling part. It's uh, pretty uh, easy. And the way you can define, select, uh, or uh, dictate things to the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the ease of use of the interface, uh, that's my favorite part. Uh, I, has, I have been exposed to the Kegel optimization, I really love that feature. And uh, especially that interface of the uh, construction stage. Currently right now is just being able to model the bridges so quickly and easily with the basic parameters because we have so many different bridges in the county. We have like 72 bridges wow. and each one has its own. We have a decent portion that are the same composite deck design, but we have some that are bascule bridges, we have some that are timber, we have some that are just concrete. So just the vast majority of them, it's <laughs> difficult to try to model each individual one for a program that won't allow an easy modeling system like this one and looking at this just being able to say we have this 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 and this and it generates the entire thing for you is already the, a benefit for us oh. and the problem problem with mdx or status like the mdx although it's totally dedicated to bridge design but it does not do anything like a simulation of load or the simulation of the analysis result, I have to dig in detail to see if everything is going fine or not. Second most important thing uh, which I dislike about those software is uh, I cannot do any curve or skew bridges. Skew bridges although like 10-15 degrees skew I am able to do it but say like if it's curved so it's totally no 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 for all those software and um, they cannot do any 3D modeling generalization. My task was uh, designing the construction stages, which included cable optimization forces. Uh, uh, I used another software. Uh, it was very tedious. <laughs> and I spent hours and days to prove my hair to make things work. Okay. Uh, that software, particular software, uh, has cable optimization feature, but it didn't work for size of our project. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this coming project, we utilized Midas, and it saved me lots of time. Uh, from this uh, Midas uh, civil, we can show the uh, stage construction through graphical methods, so it's good while you're preparing a presentation to bid for a project or while you are talking to a contractor so that's what I liked about this which is missing in all the software still now which I have been working with. So I can optimize the cables in a matter of two seconds. When I'm saying, saying two seconds, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Really, when you have all the features everything, it generates the uh, influence matrix and optimize the forces uh, I'm sorry, very quickly and very fast. Uh, I'm very happy with that feature. One thing I noticed, uh, it accelerated the time to generate the model. And uh, particular for that uh, feature I was mentioning, the cable optimization, it saved me lots of time. Uh, it get, it gives me enough time to study the data rather than generating the data. Uh, uh, it has been very helpful. Okay, um, so the East Adam Swim Bridge uh, in Connecticut, uh, that's the truss bridge. That's a series of, there's two fixed trusses leading up to the, which is exactly how long that is, but it's 200 and 50 feet long each. Oh no, actually, that's a, it's about 200 each leaf. So a 400 plus foot long structure. Uh, it's the oldest swing bridge of its type in there. Uh, and so it was a, it was a load rating task. Uh, 
uh, primarily, but to help us figure out uh, rehabilitation plans for the future and the possibility of adding a sidewalk to one side of the bridge. So that's that's what we use the you know, minus for. So. Mm -hmm. um, I, I found the moving load tracer um, mm -hmm. to be a pretty good feature. Mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, we've used it the software so far primarily on some uh, old truss bridges uh, and, and some movable bridge structures. So uh, trying to optimize our load cases. Um, we were doing some kind of manual entry, so using the uh, movable load tracer was a good way to to visually see what was happening quickly. I think the, um, it seems to be very user friendly. I like that, that it's easy to um, just jump in there because I haven't used it at all. So I, I could go in there now and um, figure out how to do certain things pretty easily. I mean, just from what I learned today. So I'm pretty impressed with how user friendly it is. And um, I like that you guys have a little picture to decide before you, you know, if you define well the width of the cap is this, the height of the column is this, that type of thing where like um, some of the leap software that you kind of have to dig around in the manual and try to figure out okay the skew angle is goes this way or this way, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and here you just have a picture you know that you can click on and define the user inputs. So I, I think that's very nice. Um, yeah, there's actually the analysis fee can be uh, Manipulated depending on what you want to get, which makes it very efficient. If you just want a little bit, you can set it to get a little bit out, which means that you don't spend as much time doing analysis of things that you don't need. I'm in general very impressed with the organization, the way interface works. Everything is pretty well organized. And uh, besides that, of course, team you have here.